Greetings loyal subscribers and honoured guests. It's time once again for another episode of Retrograde. This time around I'm taking a look at the classic Capcom brawler Final Fight. Specifically the version that was part of Final Fight Double Impact on Xbox Live Arcade. But I will also be discussing the SNES, Amiga and Mega CD versions as well as the one that was part of Capcom Classics Collection Volume 1 for the PlayStation 2. The original arcade version was released in December of 1989 and was known internally as Street Fighter 89 for a while during development because those in charge had demanded a follow up to the earlier beat em up. However, as the game was nearing completion, the staff had a change of heart and renamed the game Final Fight as the original Street Fighter was not actually very good or all that popular. As you can probably tell though, the same artists worked on both Final Fight and Street Fighter 2 and they are considered part of the same universe today. Characters such as Cody, Hugo, a renamed version of Andor, and even Abigail have been brought back in various Street Fighter games. The bigwigs at Capcom wanted their own game in the same style of something like Double Dragon or Golden Axe, and Final Fight was the result. It was incredibly popular and brought about a resurgence in the scrolling brawler genre. I remember that crowds of people would stand around the Final Fight machine in my local arcade, watching whoever was playing. The game did incredibly well for Capcom, launching a whole swathe of further titles that used a similar template, including Aliens vs Predator, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, Knights of the Round, Captain Commando and many more besides. I also attribute Konami's decision to make the X-Men, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Simpson Brawlers to the success of Capcom's games, though they did improve things once again by making monstrous four-player cabinets. Anyway, back to the subject of this video, what exactly is it all about? In the opening cutscene, the mayor of Metro City, Mike Hager, who was styled after Jesse the Body Ventura, receives a phone call from a member of the Mad Gear Gang. They've abducted his daughter Jessica in response to Hager's crackdown on crime. He enlists the help of Jessica's boyfriend Cody and Cody's best friend Guy. Then they head off on a rampage through the streets of Metro City, carving a path towards Belga, the head of the Mad Gear Gang. Each stage of the game sees you take control of one of these three characters, with the option of having a friend join in as player too. You'll explore the dirty back streets, bars, underground railway stations, illegal fighting arenas and more seedy places where the criminal element of Metro City is likely to hang out. There are some colourful characters working for Belga and Mad Gear, including Damned, a huge dreadlocked guy with shades, Andor, who is styled after Andre the Giant, Sodom, who wields giant swords and is dressed like a samurai, a corrupt cop named Eddie E, Relento, who likes to throw grenades, the aforementioned Abigail, and eventually Belga himself. The game is reasonably entertaining by yourself, but is a whole lot more enjoyable when experienced with a second player. What can become fairly repetitive and boring on your own remains consistently fun when you are working together with someone to beat the shit out of the bad guys. You could say that the two player mode is a key element of the game and it would be a significantly diminished experience without it. It's a shame then that Capcom couldn't find a way of including it in the SNES version when it was developed and that they also had to drop Guy. This is entirely down to their inexperience with the SNES hardware at the time because the latest SNES exclusive sequels did have a multiplayer mode. These omissions do make the SNES version an inferior product though, and made the Mega Drive a more enticing proposition thanks to Streets of Rage, which is a very similar game which came complete with a two player mode and an absolutely amazing soundtrack. By the time the SNES did catch up with those sequels, it was arguably too late. The home computer versions fared little better, with the Amiga and Atari ST versions having large amounts of content cut out and struggling to perform adequately. It wasn't until the release of the Mega CD version that we would receive a really respectable port of the game. This version played very closely to the original and had the added benefit of a CD quality soundtrack. The MIDI style tunes were replaced with a fully remixed score which sounds amazing. I've used it in the background to this video. The only gripe I have about the Mega CD version of the game is that the colours look a little bit washed out. Moving on to the PS2 version that's on the Capcom Classic Collection, this one uses the arcade ROMs running through an emulator, so it is essentially arcade perfect. There is the option to have remixed music, but it's not the same as the Mega CD soundtrack. The game plays just like the arcade and you can keep shoving virtual coins into it until you complete it, making getting to the end somewhat trivial. Lastly, there's the Double Impact version, which is probably my favourite. 
This also uses the arcade ROMs, but adds a rather nice user interface to the game, which includes various challenges for you to complete as you play. Overall, I think the game is still pretty good fun to play today, as long as you have someone else to play it with. I do think that Sega beat Capcom at their own game with the Superior Streets of Rage series, but you can't deny Final Fight its classic status. If you want to play it today, then picking up Final Fight Double Impact is probably your easiest option. You can buy it for the Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3, and it's also backwards compatible with the Xbox One. If you have Xbox Game Pass, it's part of your subscription too. If you'd rather have the PlayStation 2 version, copies of Capcom Classics Collection will set you back somewhere between 10 and 20 quid, though this is worth it due to the sheer volume of great arcade games that are included. Whichever version you go for, Final Fight is still worth a look and hasn't aged too badly. I would give it an overall score of 3.5 trash can chickens out of 5.